Drew, all set. Give me a thumbs up, Drew. Awesome. We're doing the static, basically a, a airspeed calibration test with that funnel and pipe, which you'll see extended when we get to the taxiway. He's just going to fire up the newly painted 1X here, and uh, we'll be following him in the truck and get that all set before he departs. Okay, we're at 927, and here's the 1X at the hold short line. There's section 1 3, and if you look real close there, you see a plastic tube that runs all the way back. And you'll see a red funnel here in a second, right there. And here he is taking the runway for departure with the funnel in tow, which you'll see in just a second. Nice wide turn. How's it look, D-Dub? Looks good. This is our version 2.0 with a little extension arm on the tail wheel. Good to go. I can see it. Yeah, it's flying good. Good. And here comes the 1X in for landing after his airspeed calibration tests. So you can see him dragging the little funnel behind him. Been an interesting test to see how this uh, how this does. But that uh, funnel there along with the plastic tubing was used for our airspeed calibration test as we're confirming stall speeds for the 1X. And Drew collecting the probe. Successful test. Okay, this is the static Port test, that's what his dad's got there for airspeed calibration. Getting ready to take runway 27. There he is just flying super slow. You can kind of use those clouds as a reference. Slow it down. There he just stalled. Cool. And that's recovery. Comes Drew after the airspeed calibration test. Oshkosh Tower Experimental 1X1 November X-ray. I'm all set. Uh, inter uh, runway 9, intersection 13. Like to depart and climb to 3000 AGL to orbit the field. I'm uh, flying with the uh, alternate static right now. So we got the, a funnel that we're dragging behind us, a couple hundred feet of, uh, of uh, tubing. 
and we're doing that to kind of calibrate the two airspeeds, see how accurate our little torpedo static line is in the wind. I'm going to go ahead and turn south. Really, really nice flying little airplane. Enjoy it. See, I just have my two fingers on the stick. I'm enjoying that. And pretty easy to set up southerly heading. You can see Highway 41 over there. Those have been to Oshkosh before. There's Whitman Field. So I'm setting up on a direct southerly heading. This time I'll keep it there. Let that stabilize with the alternate static at, at uh, 3410 RPM. I'm seeing about uh, 134 miles per hour on the alt static at due south. I'm going to switch it over to the regular static and I see a 139 to 140 miles an hour. 140 miles an hour. And I'm going to switch it on back. Let it stabilize here at uh, 140 miles an hour. Switch it up to 139, 138. Very consistent with what we've been seeing at all headings. Pretty calm day today. So still on alt static and still a wide open throttle. Just for reference, my EGTs, or CHGs 312, 280, 300, 275, EGT 1300, 1200, 1300, 1200. So pretty consistent. So 3440 on the RPM, this is our standard Sensenic prop that we recommend for the Sonics. And that's what we've been kind of doing our preliminary flight testing on the 1X with. Beautiful day in Oshkosh. Okay. So established again, pretty close to 3000 ADL. I'm um, going to let it roll out here. Establish the zero climb still on the alt static. I haven't switched it up. Now we're heading straight north. That's still a wide open throttle, which uh, here I'm getting about 3400 RPM, 3380, 3395. There we go. I leaned in just a little bit. 3400 RPM. I've established a very good, very good consistent altitude now. So I'm going to go ahead and get do some readings. 133 miles an hour is the uh, indicated airspeed. I'm going to switch it on over and I immediately pick up to 136. 136 miles an hour at 3,500 feet. And my RPM is 3,440. So I'm going to switch it back to alt static and immediately lose 3 miles an hour to 135 miles. So that's kind of does it for our wide open throttle test. So now I'm going to throttle back a little bit and establish another uh, westerly heading here. And I'll establish it on a nice uh, westerly heading. It's going to bring the RPM down to about 3100. That's kind of what we advertise as our cruise setting. Get myself a little up trim, get that adjusted about uh, maybe one full turn to get that setting set. I'm climbing a little bit so I don't want that nose to come down. There we are. I'm give myself just a little more power. It's 3080. And let that establish at 3100 RPM. Pretty easy to do throttle adjustments with this little throttle plugger. So we're at 3100 RPM. 3,500 feet. I'm going 120 miles an hour on the alternate static. 120 miles an hour on the dot. I'm going to switch it over. And on the pedal static in the wing, I'm seeing 120 miles an hour. So I am seeing uh, no difference at this airspeed. Very consistent. 120. Switch back to the alternate. Still at 120. So it feels very solid. Very nice at this speed. Go ahead and turn it to the south. And it's stuck at about 3110 RPM. Very nice. Let that settle in. Establish that at 124 miles an hour. All right now 
I blend it off to about 122 on the, on the static in the wing. I'm going to switch it back and uh, 122. So nowhere near a difference uh, at these lower air speeds, 120 miles an hour, reading very accurately. So very nice. I'm doing uh, 3,500 feet, 3,140 RPM, uh, 120 miles an hour on the nose. Uh, for some temps, just to give you some references, 1140, 1000, 1100, 1090, and then 266, 275, 280. So I'm a little low on the CHT, so you can tell I can kind of lean a little more if I wanted to, which I will. So leaning out a little bit, I felt it pick up. And all the temps will just slowly come up. That's the beauty of the aero injector um, carburetor we've got on here. You just kind of Pull the mixture until it runs rough, come back in, and you're at that ideal location for that setting. So, all I did was lean it out a little bit, and suddenly I'm at uh, 3167 RPM with the same setup, picked up a mile an hour or two. So, nice. Well, very comfortable flying here. See, just with doing stick input, just the ailerons, that's a nice, easy roll just with the ailerons, my feet on the floor. Well, it's very consistent. If I want to do it correctly, well coordinated turn, I just pick a little bit of rudder and start establish the turn. So this would be a nice little trainer for those of you that are fighter jocks or aspiring fighter jocks. Now we're going ahead to turn north here, check into the tower. Nascius Tower Experimental 1X, 111 November X-ray. I'm on the lake shore, halfway between the numbers 1836 northbound at 3000 ATL. I'd like to re-enter the pattern for landing. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce throttle now. And we can do a little slow speed testing here since we know our alternate static is uh, pretty darn accurate while we've got it on here. And I'll just do about a 100 mile an hour descent here and we'll just do a little calibration on the way down. So there's uh, 102, 100 miles an hour with that stick pressure, feels really comfortable. 100 miles an hour, the descent rate of about 600 feet per minute. I'm gonna switch over to the wing static, and I get 95 miles an hour. Go 99 to 95. I'm gonna come back to alt static, 99, right on the dot, 100. So there you have it, it's uh, 99, it's about four miles an hour the slower speeds, um, under 100 miles an hour, 120 just rock solid. Okay, so there's 100 miles an hour, and I'm going to come back on the trim, and for this airplane, just like the Sonic series, you just got to dial the trim back, so I call it the dial of speed, so it kind of settles into the speed you want, and that's establishing with uh, no stick pressure from me. Just a little bit of back stick. It's about 95 miles an hour. So now I can come on with flaps. And there's one notch of flaps. Let's see what I can fly it at. There's an 85 miles an hour, 84 miles an hour, 83. So it's pretty much pegged at 83 miles an hour with a descent of about 500 feet a minute with uh, one notch of flaps. Going back to the pitot for a second, that's 75 miles an hour. 75 with the pitot static translates to 83 with the alternate static. 75 with the pitot static, back to 83 with the regular static. So there it is. So now I'm gonna go full flaps. Doesn't take that much of a pull. And see where that wants to establish. We're doing minus uh, a lot. <laughs> Well, right now it's just getting set up. I'm 70 miles an hour on the nose. And because of the quarry, we always hit a little lift here, believe it or not. It's at minus 400 feet a minute. So 69 miles an hour alt static. I'm gonna switch back. I'm gonna see 58 miles an hour. That was a little wing wag I just got. 56 miles an hour, 58. Back to the alt static, 69. So it's fairly significant at the slow speeds. I'm gonna add a little power here. So I pull flaps, I'm going to slow it on down, pull power because I definitely have the runway made. 
I just don't want to taxi too far and drag the probe. So there's 83 miles an hour on the alternate static as I come over the fence here. It's about minus 800 feet a minute with the flap, so they definitely do something. Minus 1,000. And just another quick check back to the static. Our, our wing static is saying 80 miles an hour. Our alt static is saying uh, now 85. I'm pulling power. Just going to keep it pointed straight. Came in a little hot on that one. So I'll just reestablish, let it come down, settle in. That's all you got to do. If you really screw up a landing and it bounces, just keep your composure. One November X-ray, Roger. I'd like to, just after I pull across the whole short line, jump out and collect my probe if I can do that. Thanks, Chip. I'll be out of radio contact for about uh, two minutes. There we go.